Okay, so we're back, and we got our copies of Validar today on the new Grand Hero Battle Maps. And Validar is definitely a unit you may be interested in, because this guy is pretty goddamn good for a Grand Hero Battle. Always nice when we get some free-to-play respect on these units, and they end up being very competent. So, he's going to be a pretty good merge project for anyone that's interested, or if he was one of your favorite characters. I know this guy is a pretty popular villain, so... Definitely a worthwhile investment if you're looking forward to it. Now we take a look at his artwork here real quick. He's got very, very good artwork. Always nice to see that from free-to-play units. Awesome special attack there. The legendary Daisuke Izuka, right? Homeboy just never misses on these artworks. And I, he's the only artist in Faye that I've ever met in person. Told that story a million times. So if you've never heard it, then <laughs> I've probably told it on another video. So go watch those. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at his weapon here. So he does come with a perf weapon, which always is good for these Grand Hero Battle units. And his is Grimly Ill Text. Gives him a flat res up 3. And then also at the start of turn, he's inflicting defense and res minus 6. Panic and discord on any foes that are in 3 rows and 3 columns centered on him that have less res than him. So pretty easy condition to activate there. His res is really good. He's got 43 base res, which is being augmented by 3 automatically on his weapon. So he's essentially at base 46 res. There's not going to be too many units in the game that are able to escape his debuffs. So very lenient condition here and also a very wide radius of effect. So very strong stuff. Also, at the start of combat, if his HP is over 25%, he's inflicting a further attack and res minus 6 on the enemy in combat. He gets a guaranteed follow-up, which is pretty clutch, considering he's only got 17 speed. Holy dump stat on speed there. <laughs> they really min-max this guy like crazy. And then also, he's going to be doing bonus damage based on X, where X is the total number of penalty effects active on any foe. That is within two, faces, two spaces of the target foe as well as the target foe. And it's going to multiply those penalties by four. No stat penalties, unfortunately, but that's perfectly fine. And this also excludes AoE damaging specials. So he can only do these on regular attacks and regular specials. No AoEs. So how much damage is he actually doing? Well, first of all, he's getting two debuffs out of his weapon himself. So Panic and Discord, that's two. So that would already be eight points of bonus damage added to every attack that he does and assuming that the allies or the enemy that you're targeting has allies within two spaces of them that also have panic on and discord on them which shouldn't be hard to do considering this guy could hit like <laughs> as many as the entire enemy team with this debuff here depending on where you put him you could be getting even more numbers out of this so just a crazy amount of bonus damage and you can run a lot of other skills to get more penalty effects active on the foes like the gold border ploy skills are really nice on him too so just a crazy amount of damage crazy amount of debuffing and just the, the debuffing can be seen as a support effect too because it's helping your other allies out if they're going to enter combat so just very awesome stuff all around from validar now we go ahead and take a look at his stat line here so homeboy's got 42 hp we got 46 attack 17 speed 35 defense and 43 res. So all of that dump stat in speed was able to raise his defense to a very good amount. There's not too many free-to-play tome units that actually have solid defense like this. I think Limstella is like the only other one. <laughs> so Validar having really good defense and res can allow him to pull off a multitude of builds here, which we're going to take a look at in just a sec. The only unfortunate thing is that he doesn't have any super boons in any stat. He only gets plus three on everything. So a minor setback would have been nice to get like plus four on attack or res, but it's okay. It's not going to end his life or make him any worse at being able to do the things that he does. So perfectly fine. And he's got a 183 BST overall. So any boon that you go for is going to jump him up into the next scoring bin. All right, let's take a look at his base kit here. So he comes with Glacies. Unfortunately, he doesn't have minus one special trigger. That's like the only nitpick I can say about his weapon. So it's going to be a little more difficult for him to pull off using special attacks as opposed to other red tomes. Like, for example, his contemporary Marla, who we're going to take a look at in just a sec for a comparison. He comes with Brash Assault 3 as well, which I have no idea why they gave that to him. 
Well, of course I know. It's because it's a booty passive that is easy to get on other units. So they just gave him the shaft and gave him a nonsense passive, which they always do for these free-to-play units. But it, this gives him a guaranteed follow-up, which is already in effect on his weapon without an HP condition, which Brash Assault has an HP condition on it. So it, it just baffles me. Like, they, even Chill Attack would have made more sense to give him than Brash Assault 3. So I really don't know what the thought process was behind this. Then he's got Attack Ploy 3, which will definitely take that, because you can use it as a prerequisite for Attack Res Ploy 3. And <laughs> that is something that you're going to want to give him. So at the very least, they gave us something for him in the C-Skill there. Now, as I said, we're going to do a little comparison between him and Marla, who was actually the best in-slot Red Mage <laughs> infantry type that you could build up prior to his release. I still think Marla has uses. It's not like Marla is dead in a ditch now just because Validar is here. She makes a little bit better use of the Arcane Eclipse, which is the Arcane Red Tome. So there is that in Marla's favor. So if you were building Marla or you were in the process of building Marla, don't fret. It's not like she's just going to go extinct just because of Validar. But let's take a look at stats here. So he's got 42 HP. Four more than Marla, which is actually pretty good because it raises his bulk and then it lets him run stuff like Infantry Pulse 4 a little bit better. Maybe even Sudden Panic if you want to go there. They have the same exact attack stat, which is fine. I don't think either of them had Super Boons on attack. Then he's got way less speed, which, I mean, let's be real. The speed dump for the raised defense will definitely take. Although Marla is going to be less susceptible to wary fighter effects when she's fighting against armor type units. So, the speed isn't useless on Marla. Then, of course, we brought up defense. He's got way more, 15 more points. And then Rez, they are almost tied. His weapon gives him plus 3 on Rez, but then if you give Marla Arcane Eclipse, you're going to take the Rez Refine anyway. So, Marla does win out on Rez, and I do believe she has a Super Moon on Rez as well. Yes, she does. So, Marla does win on Rez, and that's going to allow her to hit harder. Also, with Arcane Eclipse, she can run better specials like Glacies to do more damage. So, if you want an all-arounder, I think Validar would win. And if you just want DPS, then Marla would probably win there. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at some builds now for Validar here. So, our starting build, of course, we're going for Attack Res Ploy because we want to <laughs> just get even more debuffs active on the foe. He's already doing Defense and Res minus 6 with his weapon. So, attack is the only other stat we can drop with a gold border ploy at the moment. The other one is def res ploy, and, I mean, that's redundant with the already defense and res debuff that he does. So, at least we're getting attack out of this, and then we're getting two more status effects, exposure and also ploy. Exposure's really good because it's adding 10 points of damage with every attack, and his weapon already is adding damage based on how many debuffs the enemies have. So, just a crazy amount of DPS is going to be added for this guy. Now, we can also cut DR in half with Attack Res Tempo 4. Magic Null Follow-Up is an option, too, if you want to cut DR. And the good thing about Magic Null Follow-Up, the passive, is that it's not speed-based. So, he's just always going to be able to nullify wary fighter effects or enemies' guaranteed follow-up effects. Could be useful in armor matchups where the foes don't really have that much speed. So, stuff like Brave Edelgard, for example. But Tempo, of course, as you guys know, when comboed with stuff like Guard, which we're getting from Fire Flood Boost, just leads to an insane amount of tanking. So Tempo, Guard, and then maybe you got Veil on the team as well to get Scowl on this guy too. The enemies just cannot use specials against him, which is very strong. I've got Iceberg here, but Ruptured Sky is possible also if you want to just get a more easy access special since he doesn't have minus one. Or maybe you're getting acceleration on hit from somewhere, like, I don't know, Legendary Hinoka or someone on the team that does it. Maybe even Nah. So, I Iceberg is going to just do way more damage, so that's why I put it on this build. We have Squad Ace BU3. Gives him HP up 5 and then Attack and Res up 3. We want to raise Visible Res so that we have a better chance of using the debuff on his passive. Although, he is <laughs> more likely than not going to get the debuff even without raising his Visible Res. So there we go. And then Fleeting Echo. This guy can actually use all three of his possible Echo skills pretty well. I just went with Fleeting Echo so he gets some player phase DR. That's the only thing that he doesn't really have. And it combos nicely with his very good bulk here. <laughs> We're also getting 10 HP out of Fire Flood Boost and the Squad Ace Seal. So very good. 
All right, here is a nuking type of build for him. So th this is where I think Marla would be a little better because she's able to run Glaces. You, you could also run Arcane Eclipse on this guy too, if you wanted. That weapon still has a guaranteed follow-up and then it's got the minus one special trigger and also the times pulse effect for turn one. So it enables him to use specials a little faster, but I, I feel like you're taken away from a little of his uniqueness if you get rid of his weapon because th the debuffing on his weapon is very powerful. So I, I think we want to keep that if we're running Validar here. So just going for the classic finish four, spiral four, times plus four combo. Bonus doubler four adds a lot of power here because he benefits from basically every stat. So if you're able to get all stats up six on him, then that's going to be doubled with bonus doubler. And then we got death blow echo since it adds the most damage from the echo seal. So there we go. And then finally, we've got this all around bait build here. So close foil gives us close countering against non-dragon enemies. If you want to, you can run a close reversal or... Is the close counter skill that gives Res Up 5 available yet? I don't think it is. But close reversal would be the one you would want anyway because you want more defense for him if he's going to be close countering. We got Null C4 so he can give the middle finger to all of those fire sweet pesky units like Legendary Hinoka, Legendary Veronica, there's also Duo Elise and like all the staff units and basically anything with Fire Sweep is just going to get wrecked by Null C4. So we've got that there and then Desperation units are going to get wrecked as well because Hardy Bearing just turns off their ability to hit you twice in a row. So T Lysithia is getting wrecked and all of her friends as well. Then we've got Attack Oath Echo here. Like I said, he can run all three of the Echo skills pretty good. So I, I just showed off a different one for every build. This one lets him warp in and gives him blue bonus to attack up six at the start of turn. And then we've got attack smoke for another pretty good C skill for him because it's going to do attack minus seven after combat to target and foes within two spaces of target. Then it also gives him a status effect nullifying the enemies from doing a follow up attack. So combos nicely with his weapon and gives him Omni Breaker essentially. And then with the attack minus seven, that's another debuff that his weapon doesn't do. So it gives you a little bit more of an enemy phase, which makes sense with an enemy phase build like this. And we got Ruptured Sky there just for the easy access special, but feel free, feel free to run Iceberg if you want to. Now, there are a couple of other passive skills that I didn't bring up on these builds that he can make pretty good use of. So Bonus Doubler 4, as I said, he pretty much wants everything up 6. So Bonus Doubler 4 makes sense. Bracing Stance 3 is an alternative to Fire Flood Boost if you want to just get defense and res instead of attack and res. And also just always get access to your stats and guard. Fire Flood Boost does have a 50% HP condition, whereas Bracing Stance is just enemy phase only. And then Stillwater 4 to raise his visible res if you're not confident that he can beat the enemies with his res check. Although I don't think that's much of a concern. His res is really good. So you, you may not want to use Stillwater, and it also tanks his defense by 5 points, which kind of sucks because his defense is worthwhile. Then for the B skill, you've got access to Guard 4, which can give him Guard from the B skill, as well as some DR and doing Attack minus 5. Mystic Boost gives him... Mystic Boost is like the best of both worlds between that and Null C4, because you're doing attack minus five, and then you're also getting Null C against staff type units, and then you get 10 HP recovery after combat. And you also nullify adaptive damage. So if enemies are trying to target his defense, like in the event of dragon type units, they're not gonna be able to. So pretty good way to give them the middle finger. And I already brought up Magic Null follow-up, but it's possible to run over tempo four if you wanna cut DR in half and then get a better matchup against slow armored units that have wary fighter effects. And then finally, Kanto Control, of course, because this guy can just stand there menacingly. <laughs> so anytime you've got units like that, they can support the team with Kanto Control. And then he's also doing a bunch of debuffs on his weapon. So he's just standing there laughing it up <laughs> while the enemies are getting shredded. So pretty awesome. Very nice Grand Hero battle. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below about Validar. And this is your boy Tacho signing out. So take care, fellas. And I'll catch y'all again on the flip side.